Hey guys, Sinus CBA here, and I'm bringing my first Yu Gi Oh video on my channel, which I'm excited for. And if you read the title of the video, it is a deck profile for Sylvans. So before I get into the deck profile, I just want to maybe try um, the segment where I just go through the pros and cons of the deck, which I've noticed while playing it. So I'll just get straight into that. Um, the pros, um, the most easy one to say is it's a fun deck to use. It does quite well. I've topped a couple of times my locals, and if I don't, I go positive either way. Um, the combos you can make are great in the deck. You have access to the best higher rankings, like sevens and eights, you know, the higher ones, which I'll go through later. Well, you can see one there, Grand. Um You can make unbeatable fields, so your opponent can have a, will have a hard time getting over your cards. Um, that's it really for the pros. The cons, um, it's quite a bad one, but sometimes the deck can be inconsistent. And what I mean by that is the your first hands, you can brick if you have like seven or eights and no way of summoning them, or the level ones, which you don't want to see in your hand, but you'd rather excavate. So if you don't have a way to excavate in your first or second turn as well, oh, you're probably going to lose the game because that's what the deck does, it excavates. So yeah, but that doesn't happen often. Um, it only happens about 10%, maybe 5% of the time I play this deck. But when it happens, I wish I wasn't playing this deck. So that's the end of the pros and the cons. Let me know in the comments if that's all right, if you want me to stop or carry on that. I just thought I'd give it an insight of how I feel playing the deck. So yeah, I'm gonna get into the profile. So starting off is three Hermitries. Home Trees is just one of the best, is probably the best silver monster in the deck. Um, he has quite a lot of effects which are useful. He's your draw engine. When you excavate a card and it's a plant, you draw a card. When he's excavated, organize the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. He's rank, he's not rank, um, level, he's a level eight, so you, know, you can go into your rank eights. And as well, he's got a two seven attack, which is not bad. And then we play three stage choir. Um, some people play this to a 2, but I prefer 3 because it has a much more useful excavation effect in Harry and that is basically when um, it's excavated you can add back a Sylvan Speller Trap back to your hand so your general target is either Sylvan Charity or Mount Savinia if you really need it and also it has the same effect where you can excavate a card but you don't get to draw off it and it has a sort of a hand trap element. If um, and a Sylvan is excavated, you can special summon it from your hand. And also, it's a level seven, so rank sevens can be made. Um, Sylvan Blade Fender. Um, most people don't play this card, but the only reason I play it is because it's a level four Earth monster, and I can make Naturia Beast with it. It's not very often I'm writing Naturia Beast, but when I do, it's great. And if there's a card I would normal summon, it'd be this because it's one hand attack, which is great for a level four. And it destroys a monster, excavate a card. And then we play two silver and marsh leaves. Um, this card's good. When it's normal summoned, um, excavate the top one or two cards of your deck. But I prefer getting the excavation effect is when it's excavated, destroy a monster on the field. But if, the, if you draw this card and no other way of excavating, you would probably normal summon this so you can get your deck started. And then two silver and Kurumashumo. Um, I like this card because of its flip effect, it's a good way to first turn, but it can be quite slow because of course it has to be flipped, so if they destroy it without flipping it face up, or you don't get to flip it face up in your turn, it's quite bad, but basically its effect is when it's flipped face up, um, excavate the top 5 of cards of your deck and any non-plants go to the bottom. And also, if this card is also excavated, you can destroy a spell of trap in the field. So you can even play this one up two, I've played two because I'll explain later why I do. Um two Silver and Princess Sprouts. Princess Sprout is also a really good card on the deck. Um its main effect is when it's excavated, um declare a le um a level between one and eight and special summon it from the graveyard and it becomes that level. So you can go into your rank seven or eights or manipulate its level for a synchro summon. And then we play one Sylvan Peacekeeper. This card's 
good uh, when it's excavated, um, especially some of the level three or lower plant type in your graveyard. So your main target is are going to be Lone Fire, probably or itself, because it's also over effective if it's normal or special excavator card. But the only reason I played this is one because it can be really bad if you get it at late or mid game because generally all your monsters that you would want to special summon off Lone Fire will either be on the field or in the graveyard. But still, it's still a good card. And then the last Sylvan is Sylvan Cherish Belt. Um, good effect because when it's excavated, especially summon a level 1 plant type from your deck. Um, it is good because um, in this deck, I play 5 level 1 plant types and they're quite good as well. So, also, this card is special summon excavate the top 1 or 2 cards of your deck. So, that's it for the Sylvan cards. Going into the extra plants, um, three lone fires. Um, lone fires is good, easy way to get out hermit trees, and if you have soul charge in hand as well, going to all three, then you know soul charge them all up. It's great. And then we play two rose lovers. This card's fairly new. If you don't know what it does, basically you can banish it from the graveyard. And especially summon a plant type from your hand, and for the rest of that turn it's unaffected by traps. So it's pretty good if maybe if you want to get Hermitry's effect off, um, a good way to get Hermitry out as well. And also a good target for Mount Sylvania to put, use its effect to put it in the graveyard as well. And then for the last of the plants, play the three tuners um, Copy Plant, Glow Bulb, and Spore, great level ones. Some people don't play Copy Plant, but I think it's great. Basically, if you don't know what it does, it copies the level of a plant type you control. So you can make it level 8 or 7 and make a rank um, 8 or 7, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, good card, I think. Also, a nice target for Miracle Fertilizer. And then for the last of the monsters, it's not a plant type, but it's a warrior. And it's called Rose Archer. If you don't know what it does, when your opponent activates a, um, a trap card, you can discard it. And negate its effect, and but you have to control a plant type to use its effect. Um, for the spells now, we play three Mount Sylvania, um, a great field spell, um, nice way to stack your deck, good way to excavate as well, because at the end phase of your opponent's turn, you get to excavate a card. If it's not a plant type, you can decide if you want to put that top on the top or bottom of your deck, so you can decide if you want to draw it for your next turn. And then we play three Sylvan Charities, probably one of the best draw cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically draw three and then reveal at least one Sylvan and one other card from your hand and put them on top of the deck. So essentially you can go plus two depending on the cards you put on top of your deck. And then we play three Miracle Fertilizers, go card in general, um, once per turn, especially summon a plant type from your graveyards um, can use two or three on the same turn and yeah it's continuous as well so you can keep on using it and your opponent would be quite silly if they don't destroy this card because you keep on reusing it and reusing it and then just two MSTs this was space typhoon the reason I pay this um, and I better explain why I do because at my locals it's quite trap heavy so I need to get rid of back row um, that's why I pay two Kirin Shumos because also the expiration effect where it destroys the spells or traps and as well Rose Archers because the game traps is fine. Um, if the locusts aren't as trap heavy you could probably replace this maybe with Upstarts or some other useful card which you think would be would, be, would fit well in the deck but for me Typhoon is good for me. Yeah, so for the rest of the spells, we play one Red Geki, Soul Charge, which is good. You know, if this deck was so much better, what is it? Three, but still, one's still good. And then one for one. Um, off this one card, you can create so many combos. So yeah, and it's good. It's just good. And the last card, one Trap, which is Vanity's Emptiness. Um, a good card. You can easily work around it, you know, because you're constantly sending cards from your deck to the grave, so it destroys itself. And because of the low trap count, you can easily side and reward crews if need be. So that's it for the main deck. 40 cards. 
So now we move on to the extra deck. So we play two Felgrands. Felgrand is just one of the best XYZs out there. Um, yeah, basically, it's good. And then we play Easy Eye, the Silver and High Protector. Um, this card's got three to defense and two three attack, but its effect is great. Um, basically, you declare a card name. If it's then you excavate a card. If it's that card, add it to your hand. If not, excavate um, excavate it um, either way. And then you can attach a material and put a card on the top of the top or bottom of the deck from the build. So you can put a, you know a troublesome card from your opponent's side of the field to the top of the bottom of the deck. Um, Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis, just a good way to destroy the fields or get cards from the field of hand into the graveyard, which you want. Um, Galaxy Eyes Tachyon, um, good card, 3k attack, um, effect negation and it can attack twice depending on if, if effects activate in the battle phase. Um, Gimmick Puppet, Giant Grinder, good way to deal extra um, damage against decks that XYZ summon, like Stellar Knights, you know, decks that XYZ in general. Um, might I don't have one at the moment, but a good replacement on this card would be Big Eye, because um, Big Eye is good, but I don't currently have one, so it could probably replace it with this card. No, you want to replace Big Eye with this card. I don't know, my English is not too good. Anyway, um... Mecha Phantom, Drago Sack. It's not as good as it used to be, but it's still a useful card. Can even use its tokens for synchro summons. And then for the last XYZ, we play Aurea, the Sylvan High Arbiter. Um, if you don't know what it does, you can send a plant from the hand of field. Um, depending on its level, organize that top many cards on top of your deck. So if you send Hermitry, you can organize the top eight cards of your deck, which is really good. So more stacking. And it's other effect, when you detach, you can clear a number between one or three, expect that many cards, and for each plant, you can send that many cards from the field back to the hand. So that's quite good, and it doesn't target, so it's like a tiramisu, and it's got a 2-8 attack. And for the synchros, we play one form of synchron, um, nice card, nice way to draw. Can make it, maybe we have a Peacekeeper or Rose Lover and then Glow Up Bulb and Grave. Can, you can make it, and it's a tuner if you didn't know, so you can also tune it with like parametries to make other cards. Um, the Tuner Beast, as I said, this card doesn't come out as often as I like it to, but still it's a good card to have in the extra deck. And then Crimson Beta, just good against certain decks, can ruin their game and give you the win maybe. Um, Stardust, this could be the other card that could be replaced by Big Eye. Um, yeah, but if you know your opponent uses cards which destroy, like Rare Force, or you're throwing that uh, top deck Regeki, just, yeah, it's good. Um, Scrap Dragon, just great synchro in general. Yeah. And then for the final two, we play Leo. You know, it's a 3 1 attack monster. That can't be targeted to the set for your main phase two, but generally your opponent just doesn't do that. They don't target in your main phase two. They either forget or just just, just they just leave it on the field. And then the final card, Star Eater. Um, this card's good. Can't be negated when it's summoned. Three two attack, unaffected by other card effects when it attacks. And as well, this is your only out to um, Cleefort Towers, or just people call it Towers to shorten it. Um, you know, it can get over it because, yeah, it's your only out. So that's, you want to get this out if Towers comes out. Anyway, um, that's it, guys. That's the deck profile. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you liked it, like the video. If you want to stay tuned for more deck profiles, subscribe, all that jazz. And if you have any opinions or if you want to state any opinions I can make on the deck profile, let me know in the comments. I'll read them and improve upon that. Uh, next video, which I hope to be coming out uh, another one this week on the weekend. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this because you'd be watching this like two months in the future. Uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. So thanks for watching and goodbye for now.